Good morning and welcome to this month's version of the Introvert Intel video. I'm your host, Steve Friedman, and the creator of the beyondintroversion.com website. So this month I wanted to chat with you about um, re releasing and calming our cluttered minds. I've heard a lot about this lately and had a couple of notes from readers that have asked what the trick is on how to get the voices out of our head and collect ideas that we hear throughout the day. So I thought I'd uh, spend a few minutes and chat a little bit about that. Um, I think these are common introvert challenges for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, we're just clearly very introspective. So we do spend a lot of time thinking about things, what happened in the past, what's going to happen next. And it gets um, a lot of our thoughts floating around in our head. And I think oftentimes we struggle to try and organize those, clear them out so we can be more mindful about what's going on in the present. The second challenge is that introverts are oftentimes very observant and great listeners, which is a fantastic trait, um, but we collect a lot of ideas throughout the day. I always said at work I wasn't necessarily the most creative person, but I listened and I heard a lot of ideas that I just wanted to think about further or um, consider developing into uh, new activities or ideas myself. And so they kept swimming around in my head as well. And so um, it really got frustrating, didn't let me concentrate on the here and now and things that might otherwise be stressful to me like meetings or presentations. And so the key I found was to try and get that out of our heads. So if we classify these two things into uh, past and future, so there's a lot of things in our heads na um, naturally that happened in the past. So I know I replay a lot of um, presentations, meetings, um, activities that I did in my head. And I think mo most often about what I could have done differently, how I could have learned from those. And I think those are healthy things to consider. We should make sure that we're also celebrating the activities that we did. Nothing is perfect. Our activities, our presentations may not be perfect, but, um, but we did them and we should celebrate the journey because we're on a journey of learning and improving and that is part of it. But once we celebrate it, collect our learnings, then it, we need to kind of document those things and move on. The activities in the future may be a little bit more of a challenge because we hear all these ideas and oftentimes it's in the middle of the day and so we're trying to concentrate on a conversation of some sort and yet we've got these things that I uh, don't want to lose and so they are um, things I need to get out of my head so I can focus. So what I found um, the trick for me is um, fourfold. One, to carry a little bit of a notebook small little thing in my pocket. If I have these ideas, no matter where they are, then I jot them down. That way I feel like I've gotten them out of my head. I'm not forgetting them, but I can leave them alone for now and concentrate on the here and now. The other thing is uh, everybody should have a task list doesn't have to be long. It can be on a piece of paper. Many people use sticky notes. Some people have more formal apps or planners, but some mechanism to put our tasks on paper so that once we get them out of our head, we can put them in our kind of daily task list. Doesn't have to be all for today, but we can put it out there for days or weeks later. And if it still is something that is of interest and we think is important, then um, it'll still um, uh, percolate up to the top and demand our time. And if after a couple of days or even weeks, we look at it and we're like, well, that was a fleeting moment, that's fine, and we just leave that. Uh, the other thing are calendars. So I would certainly say a calendar is a helpful thing to make sure you're managing your own time so other people are not managing your time for you. And you can put these tasks and ideas that are floating around in your head on your calendar so you know you're going to get to them. Um, you just don't need to get to them right now. And the fourth thing, and perhaps one of the most important things, is journaling, because journaling is a bit of a proactive way. So if we journal in the morning, and again, this doesn't have to be a lengthy journal. It can be um, 30 seconds. It can be taking your notebook or some sticky note and just thinking about, well, what's on my mind? What ideas do I have? What worries do I have um, of things coming up today or in the future that I can get out of my head, put them on paper, and then I'm able to set them aside? And so I would encourage you to think about journaling even in a very informal way 
Um, I started journaling more frequently and it's just a way to get those ideas down um, and I feel comfortable about them and I can move on with the day and focus on what I have uh, to do. So think about those four uh, tools for introverts because the listening and the introspection are great um, strengths of introverts. We just need to make sure we we kind of manage those um, in the right times of our day so that we're not overwhelmed by them and can't concentrate on the tasks we have at hand. So uh, that's our topic for this month. Come visit us at beyondintroversion.com. We put out monthly blogs on various different topics for today's introvert, as well as we have uh, two really successful and um, popular quizzes that you can take for free. There's more resources available on the website as well. So beyondintroversion.com, and I'll see you next month. Thanks.